everybody. I am Jason. This is Melissa, and we are Jason and Melissa Travel. And at the end of every one of our stays, we typically stay for a month, we like to do what we call a cost of living video or a cost breakdown of every single one of our expenses that we incurred while we were at that location. So grab yourself a cup of coffee or grab yourself an adult beverage or grab yourself an adult beverage in a coffee cup and let's get started. We like to do these cost of living videos for each of our locations because if you're doing slow travel or you're just curious about uh, how much it's going to cost you to live in one location for a month or you're thinking about future retirement, there's a lot of really good information in these videos that you might find really useful. One of the things that we absolutely loved about Couture was just how beautiful that place actually was. So the city of Couture, Couture is actually fairly small and it sits right on the Bay of Kotor, and then it's sort of like in a bowl, and it's surrounded by these beautiful, beautiful mountains. I got to go up and do some hiking. Melissa went up with me one time. I had to uh, sweet talk her with some wine and some cheese and stuff like that. She did go up with me once. One time. Yeah, <laughs> one time. <laughs> uh, and then I did some other hiking trips right out of Kotor. So um, you don't need to take a taxi or anything to get to them. They're the the trailheads are right there out of the city. Uh, beautiful, beautiful views. Um, so that was one of the big things that I loved about Couture was just the surrounding natural beauty. The waters were an incredibly clear blue color. We had some really good restaurants. Uh, we went to several of them. We'll talk about those in a little bit. Uh, they were they were they were good. We had a few that were our favorites. Lots and lots of long walks too. We got to yeah. just go for long walks and explore kind of the ruins and the downtown area and yeah. then just kind of out into the neighborhoods, which was fun because there's all kinds of little shops and bakeries and just lots of little hidden gems too, just around the surrounding area. It was a very gorgeous setting. Yeah, I think almost every evening we ended up taking a walk through the what they call the old town or like the old fortress. And that's where a lot of the shops and the restaurants and some old churches and stuff uh, are located. And we just really enjoyed walking through there in the evening. Um, I know I did. And then, I mean, it's everywhere you look in Couture, it's like it's eye candy, eye candy everywhere. It's just absolutely beautiful. So we break our costs down into several different categories and we're going to go through each one of those categories, talk a little bit about it, and then give you a final cost for each category. At the end of our video, we will give you the grand total, how much it costs both of us to be there for an entire month. And that includes everything. And I do mean everything except for one thing. It does not include our transportation into that location or our transportation out of that location. And the reason we don't include that is because everybody's costs are going to be a little bit different depending on the time of year that you travel, depending on the mode of travel that you choose. It could be very different for everyone. So that's the only thing that is left out. Our first category and largest category <laughs> is restaurants. I don't know if that's happened before that restaurants was actually our largest yeah. category. Yeah, this month it was the largest, even Oops. more so than our accommodations. <laughs> Oh, but I'm not sad. We got to go to some really amazing places. We got to know some owners. We got to get to yeah. be friends with some of the wait staff. Um, one of my favorite places was a pizza place in Contro. The owner, Emma, was just fabulous to chat with. Yes. She had her local little kitties that lived there on the property. Festa June, we miss you. You were so much fun to hang out and have <laughs> pizza with. Thank you so much for a lovely time. I have to say, one of my other favorite restaurants that we went to several times was La Cathedral restaurant and pasta bar. Yeah. And Urosh, the server that works there, runs that place. I think he said he'd been there for many, many years. A long time. That man up, runs that joint. Yeah, wound up just chatting with him. What an incredible guy and made our stay there in Kotor so much fun. We got together with him several times. So I highly recommend that place really delicious wonderful atmosphere it was kind of tucked back into a little alley it was just really beautiful really really good 
So like I said, restaurants was our biggest category this month. It came in at $1,135.57. All right, so our next category we're gonna talk about is groceries. So one of the things that we found a bit um, a bit different. Um, I'm not going to say bad. It was just different because it's uh, something that we typically aren't used to um, when speaking about grocery stores in the United States. Most of those are just enormous. So in KOTOR, uh, we did find that a lot of the grocery stores were quite small and the selection of things was quite limited uh, right there in town. However, when we got on the bus to go from KOTOR to uh, Tirana, Albania, about 15, 20 minutes outside of town, there are some much, much larger supermarkets that we had no idea existed. Yeah, they weren't even popping up on Google Maps for us when we were popping in grocery stores. So it's yeah. not like we weren't searching for someplace. They just weren't coming up for us right away. And there was a lot of construction in that area, like building roads and parking lots. So I don't know if they didn't pop up because they're possibly really, really new. But on Google Maps, they did not show up. So if you are there for a longer stay and you want to hit up a bigger supermarket, make sure you ask around. They do exist. You will need a car uh, or take a taxi to get out there to them, but they do exist. All right. So we spent pretty much double on restaurants that we did on grocery stores so our total for groceries for one month was 568 dollars and 39 cents another category that we include every month is a transportation budget this particular month in kotor we actually didn't wind up running into any transportation costs nope. This does not include any transportation costs that will get us to the city so that we can stay there or leaving the city. This is just if we wind up taking any taxis for anything, doing any tours, um, taking the local bus for anything. We didn't end up using that because we just wound up walking to everything. Everything was very, very walkable. It was so easy to get in and out of the city in terms of going to a restaurant, going to the grocery store. We didn't wind up having to carry our groceries very far. So it never was an issue that we needed to take a cab for anything. And luckily our Airbnb was maybe a whole city block from the bus stop. So we didn't yeah. even need to take a cab to get down to the bus stop and we wound up having to leave. Because we do travel full time, we have what we call our recurring costs. And these are costs that we have every single month, no matter the location that we're in. And that is our health insurance and our life insurance. So our health insurance is through a company that specializes in nomadic uh, health insurance for like digital nomads or people like us that just travel full time. And our insurance policy back in the United States does not cover us in other countries. So we picked up safety wing policy, a safety wing policy, and it does cover us while we are out traveling around. So our health insurance ends up costing both of us $147 per month. So that $147 is for both of us, not each, for both of us. And the prices do vary depending on your age. So the total for our health insurance and our life insurance for the month was $228. Another category that we break things down into is our entertainment category. Our entertainment category is pretty basic. It just has Netflix in it because it's nice to have our TV shows at night while we're out traveling. And we have a VPN, which allows us to access all of our programming and use Netflix while we're on the road. So the VPN that we use is called Surfshark. If you want to check that out, I will leave a link in the description down in the video. And it also includes uh, an Adobe Lightroom subscription that we pay monthly that Melissa uh, uses to edit photographs while we are traveling. So this category comes out to $28.50 for the month. The final category that we had this month was our accommodation. We almost always book through Airbnb. We find that that one works the best for us. So the location that we had in Couture was amazing. It was beautiful. It overlooked the bay. We had yeah. a lovely view of the bay, the cruise ships coming in. Um, we were, like I said, maybe a whole block from our bus station. So it made it really easy to get in and out when we 
finally did arrive in town and when we were ready to hit the hit the town and one of the best things that we can say about our airbnb like i said well let me start over couture is known for its cat population one of the best things about our airbnb is we had our own kitty frank we loved frank frank turned out to be a little girl that the Airbnb owner had adopted as a young kitten and had just kind of raised and it stuck around there in the area. The local neighbors also fed Frank and took care of Frank. So when we stayed, we were the proud owners of Frank for a whole month and Frank did not disappoint. She came by every single morning, ready to stretch and get some snuggles while we sat out and had coffee in the morning. Every morning. <laughs> she was there every single evening, ready to get some more snuggles while we had dinner on the patio. We got to love on Frank for an entire month. And I have to say, I think that was my most favorite thing about staying in Couture and staying at that particular location. That and the view. It was. It was I was like, the view was pretty spectacular was as well. Yeah. But I think I liked Frank a little more. The accommodation total for the month that we were in Couture came to $1,082.90. All of those categories came to a grand total for one month in Couture Montenegro of $3,043.36. This breaks down to $1,521.68 per person for the month. If you have any other questions, if you're planning on going to KOTOR or if you just have any general questions about what we're doing, where we're going, um, about that specific area, please leave a comment uh, down in the comment section. I check those comments every day. Um, I would love to help you out. I would love to help you with your planning. Thank you so much for watching this video about what it costs to live in KOTOR for one month. If you want to find out what we did while we were there, check out our video about KOTOR. And then stick around because our next location is Saranda, Albania. Cheers.